Now, cinema has had its fair share of weird and wacky films. However, there's one that to me seems to stand out to me as a very strange film. Not weird like a Lynch or John Waters film, but strange in its structure, its filming style, and the point of the film as a whole. That being the 2001 film, all about Lily Choo Choo. Now, the basic plot of the film follows two high school kids in Japan named Yuchi and Hishino, and basically deals with their horrible lives, whether bullying, suicide, rape, violence in general, and their only escape being the artist, Lily Chuchu, who didn't exist in real life, became a thing because of this film. Now, one of the best things about the film, even if you don't like it, is the beautiful cinematography. Whether Yuchi standing in the rice fields, the nighttime almost night vision shots, to the islands of Okinawa, all done brilliantly and beautifully, and I think really make you feel what the characters are going through, a sense of not belonging and feeling lost, which the film's cinematography conveys beautifully. And it's one of the key aspects to film that makes it kind of strange, as it's a lot of brutal look away scenes but it's contrasted by the beautiful shots, one of the best scenes being Hishino, who we see throughout the film goes from a nervous, awkward, kind student to a violent, controlling guy who forces his friends to violate and uses Suda, another st female student, to prostitute herself, having this moment where he starts to break down in the field whilst listening to Lily's music. Because the very important scene is it shows us the audience that Hishino in some way doesn't like what he's doing or come. The only way to let it all out is the emotion is through Lily's music. Now the film has this eclectic, almost disjointed feel. For example, the main characters and their gang want to go on holiday to Okinawa, basically Japan's paradise. However, they can't afford it and through some circumstances eventually rob a guy for his money. However, once they get to Okinawa, the film's style of filming changes to a handheld style and gives this film this eerie feeling which was the point according to the director. It says Shinoda switched to a restless, jabbing, handheld camera style for a deliberately unsettling effect. End quote. Which you definitely feel, but it's still very jarring when it happens. Now I'd like to go over the positives and the negatives of the film as a whole. First off, the negatives. The film is rather long, clocking in at about 2 hours and 26 minutes, which is a big turn off from even wanting to watch the film. And I'm not saying people don't want to watch long films. However, given the film's reputation as depressing, it does make a large barrier of entry. Next is the story can be quite hard to follow. For example, the film is non-linear, but when watching the film, it didn't even, I didn't even realise, personally, that the film starts midway through and then flashes back, so I was a little confused for a little while. And that goes for a lot of the film, given its eclectic style, which does work most of the time. However, in my opinion, it's very confusing and jarring, and a lot of the time, it is very jarring, which for many is the main critique. Now the positives, I think the use of message boards slash text messages on screen is done very, very well. Yuchi, the main character of the story, runs basically a message board for Lily Cho, where other people talk about their love for her, his name on the board being Philia, and he talks about how Lily is like John Lennon, and she is able to connect and be the ether, basically the atmosphere and the sky, which is why her songs are usually shown in the rice fields. Now what I do think they do well, it's contrast how people act online and how they act in real life. Vyuche seeming quite intelligent and outgoing on the message board, however in real life is almost stilted and unable to do anything without being told to do so. Like him being constantly hit and bullied throughout the film by Suda or even by his mother. Contrasted by Hoshino, who acts quite nice and sweet online, even stopping Yuchi from killing himself due to Suda also committing suicide. However, once we see him again, he cruelly acts towards Yuchi, and when they both meet up at the concert for Lily, Hoshino being nicknamed Blue Cat, Hoshino acts even cruel towards him. 
making Yuchi get a coke, stealing his ticket and throwing it away thus he can't get into the Lily concert. Which I think is a genius choice as Lily seems to be the only thing to make a lot of these characters happy and these dark depressing times. However we barely see her and I think she represents a sort of good in the world and tranquility which is why Yuchi loves her music so much. The film also portrays bullying in my opinion in the right way, in the sense it's over dumb, seemingly almost unnoticeable things. For example, Kuno, who basically Yuchi has a crush on, and is bullied simply because all the boys find her more attractive than the rest of the girls. Which on a side note, seems really dumb to me, but that's probably just a cultural difference. And because of this, the girl, Posse, gets Yoshino to threaten her, however, she's then eventually violated by Yoshino's gang. However, in a bit of empowerment, Kuno shaves her hair in defiance of Yoshino, Given his gang filmed the act, as mentioned in the film earlier, when Sudo says, And thus, in a pretty well written character moment, she's able to get the better of Hoshino, as it's more than likely that Hoshino was going to use that film to blackmail Bruno into prostituting herself in some way, and in her own way fight her back against this cruel thing gang. Eventually, Yuchi at the concert kills Hoshino with a knife, which feels quite deserved, and Yuchi nearly kills himself by hanging himself, however, he does not. But does come the end of the film, suffer from terrible grades, and Kuno seems to be slowly recovering from the incident, via her playing the piano at the end of the film. Which, in my opinion, she kind of seems to re represent Lily, given Kuno's lack of dialogue. And it's quite a better sweet ending, as we never were able to see Kuno and Yuchi talk, thus leaving it up to the viewer. As they ever do make that connection. Overall, I believe that's, in my opinion, the strangest film ever made. It feels good and bad at the same time, like the use of beautiful music during depressing, disgusting scenes, to the beautiful cinematography that captures the beauty and wonderful nature of rural Japan. And overall, I recommend you watch and experience the film yourself. It's certainly a unique film.